say one other thing during uh, before the break, and I, f I forgot. So let me say it now. Um, obviously, one thing we want to be doing as a church is praying regarding national affairs, world affairs, and... Um, and there are things you all, we all know the stuff that happened uh, in Ottawa this week. And uh, we just want to encourage you to be praying towards that with confidence. Um, the other thing that, that many of you are on our email and you got uh, an email regarding uh, uh, some of the stuff, uh, threats and actions from ISIS. And uh, again, we... We want to really encourage you to be praying regarding that stuff. Uh, I do just want to say one thing. One of the difficulties is you don't always know what emails and what reports are completely accurate. Um, I know that email um, that you got this week has already been out for a number of weeks. I got, I got that exact email a number of weeks ago. Um, so it isn't something that's happening it may be happening right now, but that email is not from right now. But regardless, <clears throat> um, because, because it's difficult for people to get in there to report, <laughs> um, we, we don't know exactly what's all happening, but we know the situation is very serious. Okay? So we know that. And so we want to encourage you really to be praying and um, pray for the Christians there, especially um, as, as we saw in that email. Uh, so just want to encourage you towards that. <clears throat> what we want to do, um, there's got to be more people that are sharing this morning. Oh, Derek's right there. Okay. Um, <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I thought there was more. <clears throat> okay, if, if you're sharing this morning, please come up in the front row. <laughs> um. What we're wanting to do is, you know, it's one of the things that we face, we go away to a, to a conference. There was 14 adults and two children uh, from this church that were down at the Lead On conference, and that was great. I was, I was really happy that we could all be there. But we really felt like God did some things, God spoke some things to us, that the challenge is how do we convey that to the church, and, and I'll, I'll probably be speaking a bit in, in coming Sundays on some of this stuff too. <clears throat> but it's always difficult to bring back the sense of what God did, not just the information. <clears throat> Although we're there from Thursday night through to most of us Sunday morning, um, and we're going to try to do that in a half hour or so. And so how do you, how do you communicate the sense of what God did? So... <clears throat> Excuse me. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give a bit of an introduction first. So I'm going to take about 10 minutes just to give a bit of an introduction to the whole thing. And then the different ones here are just going to share as they feel to share um, stuff that impacted them specifically. Okay. Um, <clears throat> let me just give this, this background to our time there because I think it's significant. As most of you know, uh, I'm part of uh, our regional leadership team for BC Vineyard Churches, and uh, it was interesting uh, in January of this year, uh, as we were planning towards the meetings that just happened now in October, uh, one of the things that we were asking ourselves is, you know, should we bring somebody else in? Who should we bring in uh, to be the primary speaker or speakers? And uh, we were just talking about stuff, and all of a sudden, one of the fellows on our team says, I don't know why I'm thinking about this couple, he says, but he says, I keep thinking about John and Eleanor Mumford. And they had never come up in previous discussions, previous years of, you know, we should bring the Mumfords. Or, um, and two other people on our team at the very same time said, yeah, that's exactly the couple I'm thinking of right now. You know? So we went, oh, man, this could be God, you know? Well, unknown to us, David Ruse, is, and he's part of our regional leadership team as well, and He's texting them while we're carrying on our discussion. All of a sudden, he's like, they can come. <laughs> he says, they just have to confirm that they've got something else up on the dates that we've asked them for. They just have to make sure that they can move that. And we're like, well, we can move the date. So we just said, what about this date? You know? And he's texting them. Yeah, they can come. They're committed to coming. It's like, whoa, we've never had anything happen so fast. It's just like, hmm, this really does seem like God, you know. Um, 
And then um, we were, in July, we were at our national celebration in Kitchener, and we, we communicated that to you as a church as well. Some of us were there. And um, again, we had a, and, and the Mumfords happened to be there as well. And, and we had a regional leadership team meeting just to talk towards some of the stuff again in October. And, and um, we said, well, so what should they be talking about? Like what, you know, where's God, what's God wanting to say as sort of an overall thing? And, and um, David Ruse recently wrote a song about a year ago or so um, called Lead On. And um, I don't think we've done it here yet. Um, <clears throat> but... Um, Again, one person on our team, we're talking different things, and it's not, it's not clicking with anybody. Yeah, that's what we need to be talking about. And all of a sudden, someone on our team goes, lead on. Like, that's the theme. And everybody, everybody like, yeah, that's it, you know. Uh, so it was just this real sense of God speaking to us and saying, this is what I want to do. Here's what I want to talk about. <clears throat> Let me just give you a little bit of background to that, okay. I alluded to this a little bit last week. But just to give you a little bit of context to this whole thing, because it will probably come out in some of the sharing that happens here this morning. <clears throat> For the first, as most of you know, we started this church in 1986. And so that's a number of years ago. <laughs> some of you weren't born then yet. Um, and, and for the first number of years, I would say probably approximately, it's not like it went like this, but for the first 14 years or so of our existence as a church, there was, and we had lots of, I'm not saying we didn't have challenges, difficulties, all that stuff, okay, so don't hear that. I'm not saying, oh, it was so wonderful, everything was perfect in those days, I'm not saying that at all. But there was a strong sense of the presence of God. When we were together, there was, it, was, it was common that we would see people healed physically. We saw demons cast out at different points. We, we saw a, a number of people come to faith in Jesus. There was this regular occurrence of, of some of that stuff. I've shared with you before. I remember a whole year where every single week, at least an average of one a week, but virtually every single week, and it happened virtually every time in, our, in, our, in these services, somebody would come to faith in Jesus for the first time. And it was just this ongoing thing of what God seemed to be doing. And then at some point, it's like someone started to slowly turn the tap down. Not off, but down. And the interesting thing was it wasn't just our experience as a church. It was the vineyard across Canada. And in many ways, it was the vineyard worldwide. It was like, God, what's going on? Like, we just, you were doing all this stuff, and like all of a sudden the tap got turned down. Not off, down. And so as as vineyard leaders, we're praying, we're seeking God, we're saying, God, is there something we did? Is there, you know, what's going on? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And so that's, that's been our heart, that's been our desire. Uh, we, and, and, um, and we understand there's times of ebbs and flows of, of the Spirit of God, but it's like, man, Lord, like it's, it's much easier to be praying with faith when you're regularly seeing people healed, right? <clears throat> and so that's where we've been for some years. <clears throat> In the last couple of years, it just feels like there's this rising sense of faith again. <clears throat> and that's been true um, here, it's been true provincially. It's been true in Canada. Uh, I, I know on a, on a BC level, um, there was even some, for, for lack of a better word, it was like, it just didn't feel like we were united as some of the vineyard church, churches and groups in this province. And, and it was not for lack of wanting to be united. It's just like it just wasn't... <laughs> It wasn't like this. It was like this or like this. (laughs) And so we've really seen God do something significant on that level in the last two years. It's like God's just brought us back together like this. And, And it would take me time to explain the dynamics and details of that. But it's an obvious work of the Spirit. And so... Um, 
when, when we were at this Lead On conference, um, one of the things that came out very strongly was this whole thing, you know what, we're not trying to recapture the past. We're not trying to be nostalgic. We're not trying to go, oh, it's so good in the good old days, we just want to be like that again. But one of the things that came out very strongly was this whole thing, you know what, God put some things into us as a tribe of churches or a, or a, a clan of churches or a family of churches, if you want to put it that way, called the vineyard. We believe in the whole church, okay? I hope you guys got that over the years, okay? We, we, don't, we don't see the vineyards, you know, up here, garbage, Okay? We, we see ourselves as, yeah, we, we happen to be connected with vineyard churches, but we're also very connected with churches in our own city, okay? Um, and I, I know you, I think you know that. But God has put us in this group of churches called Vineyard Churches, and he's, he's spoken some things to us over the years. There's some roots that I'm actually going to talk about, probably not today, but I'll probably start next Sunday. Um, and, and one of the things that came out really strong in this conference was, you know what, the new shoots are going to grow out of the roots. Out of the things that God spoke to you and said, this is important to me, I want you to do this, for example, worship. Okay, I just talked about it a little bit this morning. One, worship is one of the foundational things within the vineyard. In fact, God used the vineyard. Again, this is not to say, oh, the vineyard's up here. But God used the vineyard church to actually to, to change worship in the church worldwide, okay? That, that's, that's an objective statement. That's not, that's not a, oh, because we're vineyard, we can say it. That is, that is a statement of reality if you just look at history in terms of what happened, okay? And there was something, the vineyard was born in worship, okay? I'm just using that as one example, okay? And, and there's a number of things that God did in the vineyard back here. And, and so some of the conference was about, okay, this is what God spoke back here, but now God's calling us to move on. Yes, remember your roots, because it's going to grow out of that. But now God's calling you to go on. God's calling you to take new steps of faith, and, and, and uh, God's given us a new sense of anticipation um, uh, in all, all kinds of areas. We talked about the whole thing of compassion, of, of just really loving people, caring for people, serving the poor, talked about reaching out to lost people, talked about worship, talked about identifying, recruiting, calling forward new leaders, okay, a whole bunch of stuff like that, okay? But it's this new sense of faith, okay, guys, take the risks, start stepping into that, okay? So that's the context, I think, from Hart Lowen's perspective, okay? Um, and so now I'm going to have just the different ones that were there uh, share um, what God really spoke to them about and, and showed them. So I'm going to let whoever wants to go next. And um, Jeff, whenever you want to pipe in, Jeff is reading what Leslie wrote because Leslie is not able to be here um, but was at the conference. So any of you guys want to go first, go ahead. It was good. Um, I'll just go off what Angie was sharing earlier, but uh, anyway, um, um, hmm. the Holy Spirit's been working on my heart over the last year or two and uh, really stirring my heart towards how important of a role he plays. And uh, Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, anyway, I was just saying over the last year or so, um, um, the Lord's been just bringing to bringing, stirring my spirit on just how important the Holy Spirit plays as a role in our lives. And uh, I've been a very high advocate of that, just pushing, saying, yeah, we got to go for that. And listening to Eleanor um, talk on that, I was just kind of a, a refresher and just saying, yes, there's, there's other people pushing that way too. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting thing because um, I really think the Holy Spirit's a real deal maker. Um, I think uh, you can... Go through your Christian walk and be good to people and this, that, and the other thing. But I look at it as like the turbocharger on a standard engine or uh, um, spice in flavorless food. I think it, the Holy Spirit just does that and uh, brings up that whole thing about where Jesus says, you know, I'm going to give life more abundantly. I think that's, a, that's the abundant part. And part of the whole deal with Eleanor shared is... Um, you know, like Angie was referring to, the gospel leaned across the fence. Well, that was something I think she was talking to a neighbor that didn't know Christ. And 
uh, there was a crisis in her family. She was a single mom, I think, of four children. And um, at any rate, uh, she had a medical condition that was uh, uh, quite apparent and possibly, um, you know, the one with the, the death symbol on it as such. And uh, she was frightened. And I believe Eleanor prayed with her and said, well, let's just pray for this thing, right? And I think she had some kind of a tumor. And uh, Eleanor says, well, we just pray that it is shriveled up, right? And she had a doctor's appointment in uh, short order there. And, and lo and behold, she went there and wow, she came back. Or actually before she went there, she was feeling it. And she says, you know, it's getting, it feels like it's getting smaller. And anyway, as she went to the doctor, they confirmed that. And she came back all excited with it to Eleanor and said, yeah, yeah, it, it, it got smaller. And Eleanor's like, well, let, let's, let's finish it. Let's tell it to get, go. And um, she did, and it happened. And it was very impacting to the neighbor. So that was one thing. And part of the whole thing that Eleanor was sharing was, is that that's the part of the deal with the Holy Spirit in our lives, making it, making this thing like pushing us over, um, uh, not where you're looking for the spectacular, but, you know, when you're in a situation like Hart was saying, where the Lord's prompting you to do something, and there's someone standing in line at the grocery store, and, you know, even, uh, even speaking to them and giving them a word. Now, that goes back to my history in the last year. Um, I've been prompted by the Holy Spirit to do that in church. So I've been kind of venturing out and practicing on you guys here and there. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I can't say it's 100% slam dunk, but I tell you it's about 80 at least, and where you go up and give a word to someone, and, you know, sometimes they go, no, nah, it doesn't resonate, and you're like, oh, okay, and I got used to that rejection, but, <laughs> but anyway, it goes with the program, you know, you just got to take risks, and like um, Angie says, do it scared, you know, and now I'm at actually in a, in a real good place where I actually pray before I come to church on Sundays, and say, oh, Holy Spirit, okay, show me who you want me to talk to, and, and sometimes I walk away from here, and not, nothing spectacular, no you know, fireworks or anything, but, you know, I do say what I think I'm supposed to say. Anyway, so I just want to encourage, I think it's a refresher, I think it's a challenge. There was a challenge that came out here a few months ago, um, the ALS challenge with the bucket. Now, how about I throw this challenge out, and we challenge each other to get out there with the Holy Spirit and do some risk-taking. Let's get, let's get cold and wet. Up there is uh, this term, vineyard roots, the, some of the distinctives. And something I've loved over the years of being part of the vineyard is the no hype. It's not about hyping. So you've heard people talking about and, and heart particularly about the Holy Spirit. Something that uh, was emphasized many years ago and we've kept doing, and I've kept doing, is that praying the prayer, come Holy Spirit. And sometimes you sort of think, why, why do we do that? Well, it's really important to, you know, because we leak, we need more of the Holy Spirit. We need more of the Holy Spirit. And so over the years, and it's over 20 years that we've been part of the Vineyard Church, Vineyard Movement, whatever you want to call it, denomination, um, We've prayed this prayer, and, and sometimes you see incredible things happen, and sometimes you don't, and that can be frustrating. But what's, what's really interesting is that recently we've noticed that uh, we've been challenged to go back to some of the things that we, some, some good habits that we have let go, and um, we've been praying together in the mornings which is that's a big risk um, because you know when you're praying together you can I don't know I don't know how to explain it there's something that happens when people pray together and so and one of the things we've been praying for is this praying for the Holy Spirit to come and as we've been praying together and as we've been asking the Holy Spirit to come, we've noticed that there's been some emphasis in, in our lives together and as we share with other people that things have, some 
things are beginning to change where they didn't seem to change before. So, um, for example, worship. Worship is something that I've, over the years, gone through lots of lots of struggle with. Um, worship, when we worship God, it can bring, um, it can raise up pain and it can also uh, be encouraging and blessing. So to, to worship in our own lives and to um, go back to worship, it's, it's a bit of a, it's a difficult thing for me personally. But as I've begun to worship again, so I've noticed that the presence of the Holy Spirit has increased. And I went, wow, wow, that's encouraging. Um, in more recent weeks compassion towards people that I'm praying with or ministering to has risen also. And I, I went, wow. Hart was talking about, you know, remembering some of our roots. Well, some of the vineyard roots is about worship and compassion. That's really important. That was important when we first encountered vineyard over 20 years ago. And it's still important now. So, Focusing on worship and compassion. One of the speakers um, raised this subject. He said, sometimes we have to bring what we, the, what we have to God. And, and when he said that, I went, God, but I have so little. In fact, most of the time I feel as if I have so little whether it's money, whether it's, um, whether it's the presence of the Holy Spirit, whether it's um, compassion, whether it's worship, I feel as if I have so little. And, and it was, bring me what you have. Bring me what you have. And going back to the, this, you know, this Holy Spirit emphasis, when, when the Holy Spirit's on the move, and I get a sense that he's been on the move for a little while, it's to try and follow what he's doing. And sometimes that can be quite difficult to, to work out, okay, what is the Holy Spirit doing? And when there's an increase in the Holy Spirit, and an increase in his presence, it also... Um, shows up more sin. Um, that's a bit of a strange thing, but because of the, the increase of the Holy Spirit's presence, sin is more easy to see. And when, when there's the recognition of whether it's your own sin or someone else's, there's a response that's needed. And, and the Holy Spirit helps to remind us that when, when sin is in our lives and we recognize it, to repent, to turn around, to change direction. So if we were going one way, we change direction and we go the other way. And, you know, for some of us, where we've had patterns of going in a particular direction, whether you want to call it addiction, whether you want to call it coping mechanisms, whether, whatever you want to call it, to go in a different direction for some of us that have been going in the same direction for a very long time, it can be really difficult. So the encouraging thing is that when the presence of the Holy Spirit is here, we have more opportunity to go, okay, come Holy Spirit, increase your presence in my life Increase your presence so that I recognize my own sin. Increase your presence so that I can repent and turn around from my coping mechanisms, from my own stuff, and turn towards you and embrace what you're doing and work with it. Thanks, Steve. I'll, I'll springboard off that one. <laughs> Because that spoke to me, too, of the, 
you know, bring what you had to Jesus. Like that one speaker talked about um, when Jesus fed the 5,000, right? Or the, the, the disciples fed the 5,000. But they said, all we have is this one little boy. He's got two fish and five loaves of bread. You know, how can we feed these? And, and they brought the two fish and the five loaves of bread, and they blessed it. And it extended itself to 5,000. So I, I was really encouraged for myself, but also to encourage others. Whatever you have is so valuable in, in the kingdom. And whatever you have, you take it to Jesus. He will bless it. When we, when we put it in his, when we give it to him and we put it in his hands, he will bless it and, and make it go where it needs to go and speak what it needs to speak and feed who it needs to feed. Yeah. So um, a couple other things that really spoke to me. One, one was just the, the whole idea of family, you know. Um, I always thought, like, I mean, a year ago I was thinking about it, and I thought, you know, all we have to do as a vineyard is focus on God, and everything will come into line, right? <laughs> but, but this time it's like I got it. I got it. It's kind of like the, the, the value of commitment. I mean, commitment in marriage, commitment in family, commitment in a body of believers. You know, um, when you're committed to people, you endure things and you work things out and you learn things and you grow and you care, you know, about ways that you, you probably didn't care if you weren't committed. So, so, so that was good for me. I just felt like, yeah, we care, you know. This is a substantial movement of God that has done amazing things in the past and God cares very much about and continues to care very much about and will continue to use in small ways and in large ways in whatever way he chooses but we're you know we're in this together and and it was really cool the last thing was um was so cool for me to see um we'd been asked to to um bring some art to to the to the conference and and people from all over the province brought art and it was really neat to see a collection of what God is doing through art now um, I, I just believe again that's in one of those things that you bring it to Jesus and he will take it and use it so I mean it's 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 about worship but it also speaks so much more I think it's for the church but it's also I believe God's going to use it in the communities and speak you know whatever he chooses in the community um, for his glory. And, it, and, it's, and it's so good. It's so good to see people just, um, just using the, the things that God has put them inside, inside them, and, and bringing it out for his glory. So no, I, it was a great weekend. Awesome. Um, speaking of springboarding, <laughs> um, I was going to share about art this morning because um, I had an opportunity to spend time with the kids on the Thursday night, um, teaching them what it meant to worship God through art. And so I was reading up about what it means to worship God, and there's various ways that we can, you know, come to Him and worship. And some of it, you know, could be Thanksgiving and coming on our knees and worshiping the amazing God that he is. And um, the one way that I chose to explain it to the kids was um, being a mom. When my daughter brings me a piece of artwork that she's drawn for me, how exciting that is for me to receive it from her, um, knowing that she is so excited to give it to me. And she's used her gifts, her talent, to create something that she's giving to me. And so I was choosing to explain it to the kids in that way, as, and, um, on, apart from the other things I shared. Um, and so we were able to do some worship with art that night. I had three girls. They couldn't wait to, to draw their pictures because they kept saying, are we going to paint yet? Are we going to paint yet? Stop talking. Because <laughs> um, I wanted to make sure that they understood, but they just wanted to just create. <laughs> um, and so we only had three girls that night, and then I talked to Sue about um, giving the other kids um, that were coming to the conference um, an opportunity to worship God. And, and so God, I, I mean, God gives us wisdom all the time, and I just said, why not do the art sessions with the kids again during our worship time as a whole? And so we set up a table in the back, and I invited a few kids to come around, and we had watercolors and paints, and um, we had all the things for them. And 
they were worshiping God during the worship times. And um, I made a collage um, of their artwork that I'm dis- I've dis- that's been displayed up here. Um, I chose to keep them very separate because I thought, um, I was thinking of how each of them really does stand alone on their own. Um, the art piece that we did for our family night is was created as a unity um, art piece. And I was, um, it shows, you know, all of the pieces coming together as one and it just really speaks that. But um, Sunette was um, giving me some wisdom and um, she was reminding me that she had done a more of a collage with, you know, the um, rounding out corners, you know, as an artist, you know, you think of those things. Um, and then God really spoke to me about, about the individuality of each um, artist. And Leslie, sorry, I'm getting all emotional now. <laughs> Um, Leslie said to me, she said, look at all this artwork that the adults have brought. And you're creating this piece so that the kids can be proud of an art piece that they've created. And it really touched me because I never thought about it that way. Um, so I just, I mean, all, all through the conference, I really was hearing things that God is saying for our kids. And so... I mean, I really want to be a child advocate for them, to speak for them, give them opportunities to worship God in in the way that they find, you know, they're creative in. And I saw a lot of the kids that were a part of our worship night, you know, sitting back during worship, playing the game on their phone and not engaging. But when they were a part of our art, they were engaging in worship with God. And so I just think that's really a beautiful thing. So, yeah, thank you. All right. Um, Kind of going off of what, uh, sorry, Angie spoke about with Eleanor Mumford. Uh, She talked a lot about doing the stuff, carrying the spirit, uh, carrying the presence of God. Uh, Her kind of catchphrase was, gossip the gospel and pray for your neighbors and with your neighbors and that sort of stuff and and not being concerned over if they're healed or not you know and and what the outcome is but just obeying jesus just obeying that call that he's put on our hearts to do um and as a result of hearing all this i my response is that i'm just i'm tired of not doing this stuff like i'm tired of letting my own fear of man my own fear of of what people may think my insecurity um, limit what God really wants to do in my life. And I'm, I'm tired of expecting to see God move in, in, in people's lives, in the city around me and stuff, while I just, you know, sit here and be comfortable and, and that sort of thing. Um, Eleanor Mumford often said that uh, this world is going to hell in a handbasket. And uh, sometimes I forget about that. I forget that some people are going to hell in a handbasket. And I have the truth, I have the answer for them, and the hope, and the love, and the peace that I've experienced in my life, um, yet I'm too scared to, to share it with them, to, to tell them about it. Um, I got a really amazing sense of what the vineyard is, too. Um, just a quick little uh, kind of snippet for my, for my life. Um, I've been coming to this church for about seven or eight years, something like that. And uh, at the beginning, I just thought it was a really cool church, kind of a cool building, not very churchy, and, you know, good worship, and, uh, and heart's really good, always chuckling and stuff like that, you know, it's, this is awesome, right? And so, um, you know, and you hear different stories, you know, John Wimber, this, you know, he has this saying here, and, you know, vineyard movement, you know, you hear little stories, right? And so I've um, been slowly kind of piecing them together and kind of taking little snippets. But at this conference, I really got a sense of, okay, this is what the vineyard is. This is what happened. This is what God did. This is what, you know, Hart was saying, that the taps were kind of turned down a little bit. Okay, this is why there's this feeling and the sense of like, okay, this is building and growing and, and God's doing stuff. And, and I'm so glad that Hart's going to be talking about the distinctives um, in a later you know, weeks and stuff like that. Two of them really grabbed my heart. Um, one was be worshipers of God and two, be rescuers of men and women. For me to be someone that's sold out for God in worship, to be completely for the kingdom of God, 100%, that nothing else 
matters, that nothing else is important. Um, you know, things that, you know, this world has will just fade away. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm hungry or, you know, I've got this to do tomorrow. Like, no, I'm worshiping God. I'm here for him and his kingdom right now. Um, as well to be rescuers of men, like I said before. Um, so yeah, kind of tying it all together, I've, I've come to a place where I'm tired of sitting on the bench. Um, some of you may think, you're sitting on the bench? What are you talking about? No, I'm, I'm to the place where I've said to myself, I'm tired of sitting on the bench. I'm tired of just watching opportunities that God's put in my heart just kind of slip by because I've been scared, because I've been insecure, or whatever the reason is. And I know there's some of you here that feel that same way. Um, God wants to use us in ways more powerful than we can imagine. I don't want to uh, be scared. I don't want to be intimidated or insecure anymore. Uh, God is doing this stuff in the vineyard and in the lives of people all around, all around us. So, um, yeah, let's go for it. Thanks, Greg. Good morning. I, I didn't have the opportunity to go, uh, and uh, Leslie did, though. And, and uh, she really would love to be here and was disappointed that she couldn't, but somebody has to bring home the bacon, so she is, she's uh, working today. <laughs> so um, I think what you'll hear throughout what Leslie wrote down today, um, if, you just kind of, if we dig into it, is this idea that we are all, you are all, people who have the ability, as Greg was just talking about, to get off the bench. So I think it was great that I'm having the chance to go after, after you. So I'm just going to read what she wrote, and then I've got some comments on the, at the end myself. She said, I found the conference wonderful in the areas of worship, teaching, healing, and praying. John and Ellie Mumford were engaging and wise speakers. The worship leaders were dynamic and spirit-led. <clears throat> the organizers were hospitable and created a warm and welcome environment. And David Roos was a talented and inclusive host. No relation to us, by the way. Although I'm sure he's great. <laughs> Certain statements will be forever etched in my mind and act as reminders of God's awesomeness and how he desires to move in our lives. Aslan is on the move, as spoke by C.S. Lewis in the Chronicles of Narnia, will remind me that our Lord is present and on the move in our lives today, just as he was 2,000 years ago. At the beginning of the weekend, I had an image of wind and fire put on my mind. And David called for people to share if they had been given something from God. But her being a kid who came from a Presbyterian background, married a CRC, Christian Reformed Church, conservative boy, <laughs> and then raised our children in a Mennonite church, I didn't realize this is an image other than anything but a daydream. Well, my unwilling spirits aside, the Lord showed others' images and work throughout willing people to build the idea of coals or embers being fanned into flames. At this point, my reminder for the weekend became more of him and less of me. More of him and less of me. I'm amazed by all that happened when I stepped out of God's way and beckoned his Holy Spirit to come and heal and reveal and convict and fan the embers in my own life. I had an experience that I'm not convinced words will do justice to. Interesting, I had to go all the way to Chilliwack to grow in depth and appreciation of the people sitting right here in this room, all of you. It seems ironic, but the Lord showed me great things about us, the Penticton Vineyard Church. I drove to the coast with Angie, Derek, and Luke, thinking that I would sleep on the way there. By the way, I can speak, she loves to sleep in the car. But instead, she enjoyed the conversations. I worshipped next to Lynn and Stu. I shared lunch and heart-to-heart -heart with Steve and Kate. Cried, laughed, and prayed with and for Melissa. Was prayed for by Louise and Melissa. Prayed with Bri played with uh, Brielle. Spent breakfast times with Aaron, Whitney, and Greg. Roomed with Pat and dro drove home with Hart and Louise. I was shown so clearly that the people in our midst are equipped, capable, and willing to invite the Holy Spirit to pray, heal, worship, and make room for all that the Lord has for our church community, our community, and beyond. A saying that came out of this weekend was, I want to be a fool for Christ, 
Whose fool are you? Let's remember that God has fanned the flames of the Vineyard Church in Ireland and has brought 2,200 people to Jesus since February and invite his spirit to move among us and let's stand on the encouragement given to us by Ellie Mumford for the vineyard that the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. So just really quickly, um, I can tell that Leslie has been impacted by this weekend and, and I think a number of thing that's hap- things that's happened over the last couple of weeks. Much to my uncomfort, I will add, in some times. I'll give you an example and I just leave this with you as an encouragement. I, you know, we, we typically have seen people who are in need in our community and, and it's, it's always one of those tough things about do you walk past, how do you help, how do you serve? And so we had this tradition in our family where we would, you know, try to get some Tim Hortons gift certificates or gift cards and just give them out if somebody was asking for something. And, and so that was always sort of within my comfort zone because I could just kind of give the card and run off, right? And um, Leslie said the other day to our family, she said, we're going to get some more gift cards, but we're not just going to give the gift cards. We're not going to give it to them unless we pray with them. And I'm thinking, what? (laughs) (laughs) They're going to like chase after us and beat us up or something. So the other day, um, we had the opportunity. We were at Safeway and there was a young couple from Quebec who had come to Great Pick and and, uh, they didn't have any grapes to pick because they came too late. And, and so she said, well, I got a gift card. I'm going to go pray for them. And so I sat in the car <laughs> and watched. And, and it was amazing because she did. And she prayed for them. And they didn't chase after her. And they didn't even get mad. As a matter of fact, they were actually quite joyful. And so I leave that as an encouragement for all of us, you know, that we have the opportunity to impact other people. But we can't do it by sitting. Thanks for your honesty, Jeff. Steve's already alluded that uh, we came to the vineyard 21 years ago in the UK. Um, Our pastors in our church in the UK were the second church to be planted out in the UK, following John and Ellie Mumford. And um, that was the second church outside of the US and Canada. So we've, we've, we've been listening to the stories of John and Ellie Mumford for those, that length of time. So it was like coming back to the campfire, listening to their voices, and just enjoying what they had to say. It was all familiar, it was all comforting, it was all encouraging. So, and, and what was wonderful to watch was, we understood John and Ellie's jokes. The Canadians! <laughs> we could hear them tittering but not fully understanding what was going on and we could have translated but we didn't think it was worth it actually but that made me laugh it really did Um, so coming back to what happened to me when we joined Vineyard back in the UK a very wise lady over there who was instrumental in bringing John Wimber to the UK said to both Steve and I, if you are called to Vineyard, you cannot leave. If you're not called to Vineyard, you have to leave. Whoa. And we'd been living in that for most of the time in the UK and we came to Canada and we still had that and that's why we came here because that was what was called that was where we felt we were called then living waters came into our life and we have been struggling with this balance of living waters calling and the vineyard calling ever since that time this weekend has confirmed we're still called to vineyard and we are still called to living waters and now our challenge is how to balance the two and what this weekend did for me was reignite in me all those things that I was operating in while I was in the UK that I had let slip because living waters had become more of a presence in my life. So that's the words of knowledge, that's the words of wisdom, that's the gifts of healing. I got challenged to stand up and say and confess that I was guilty of letting those things slip, but God was giving me a second chance in those giftings. 
And I really sense that he's given me a second chance in those giftings as he's giving everybody else here an opportunity to play because there is a purpose he has, which is his kingdom is going to be extended in an incredibly, an incredible way, a new way, those new shoots from those roots. And also I feel, feel again, as, as Ellie has often said, I've heard her say this for years, Aslan is on the move. And it isn't a hollow statement I really sense this is not a hollow statement. We've been following things happening in the UK and other places of, uh, where Vineyard is present, present, where God is increasing the numbers of people coming into the Vineyard churches. And I really believe, as DeHart has already said, the Spirit has started to turn that tap on. It's coming again. And it's going to be really interesting to see what happens. I don't think it's unique to Vineyard. I think there is a sense that is, it is a God thing in the whole church. But Vineyard has a part to play in that, which is different from other churches. We have a different flavor of coffee. People are attracted to us in a different way, but we still have a part to play. We have a part to play in Pentix, and we have a part to play in BC. We have a part to play in Canada. You have a part to play here. And I have a part to play here. And so I've been guilty of letting my gifts slip. I've been guilty of not taking the risks. I've been guilty of not following what the Holy Spirit is saying in all cases. My challenge and my commitment now, and I'm speaking it out loud because you can all hold me accountable now, is I'm going to do what I can when I hear the Holy Spirit. I want to take that risk and step across that line. So, God got me awake last night. And so, I felt he was saying in two areas that there are people here who have some um, conditions that perhaps God actually wants to meet you at. And there's just, just two. That's all I've got. Number one was somebody who has a disintegrating knee. It's just crumbling. So if you are in that situation, then I might suggest at some point that you come up before the end and we'll, we'll pray for you. And also he woke me up with a pain in the back, which I sense was due to a kidney situation. So if you have a kidney problem, maybe you want to come up and actually receive some prayer for that as well. Okay, we'll make room for that later, Louise. For me, listening to this is just so encouraging. We've, we've been kind of sensing that, that like Carter said, that things are starting to change in, in the region. And um, started last fall and at our regional gathering and then at our BC pastors meeting and then at the national celebration this summer. And um, over the years, we've just been so aware of how connected we are as a family. And, um, you know from heart preaching a sermon here on a Sunday morning and we fly to Denver for an international conference. Somebody picks us up from the airport and um, the pastor in that vineyard church preaching on the exact same topic on the same scripture. You know, so we are very connected. So I'm just so aware that as we, as the spirit moves nationally, we will see it locally as well. And so I'm just encouraged kind of waiting for that tap to you know be turned on and um several things spoke to me um the first night um Eleanor Mumford had a word where I didn't write it down but basically she said that God spoke to her during the worship and said that he had intentions for the vineyard in BC and that intentions were capitalized and it was like I have intentions and you can either join in but it's going to happen either way and we can be a part of that if we want to and the next morning I'm reading in Jeremiah and about his call and um, you know God says to Jeremiah I'm going to put words in your mouth and you better speak them this is my version of it you better speak them because and and I will terrify the people before me so they will turn to me and if you don't say them I will terrify you 
And so I kind of went, okay. <laughs> you know, Lord, I want to engage in this. And um, that was one thing. And um, a couple of times it was mentioned, several times it was mentioned, the whole thing of stones and building and how in the Old Testament they would uh, build stones and they would build altars and they would build memorials to remember what God had done. And um, it just reminded me that, you know, we need to tell our stories. We need to um, have our stones of remembrance, not because of the good old days, but because we need to remember. It's like sitting around the family table and you start telling stories and the kids say, oh, remember when we used to do this and this? And everybody laughs and we remember that's our family stories and just the importance of that because people aren't going to know our stories if we don't tell them. And we just assume that the history that we have is just kind of, you know, being caught there. So, um, you know, and in the middle of that came the whole thing of, you know, to not become weary in doing good because in due time you will reap a harvest. And it made me realize again that the invitation to join in what the Father is doing needs to constantly be responded to. And it's not just going to kind of happen. We have to respond to the Father's invitation and um, there was a comment made that we think that we're waiting for God, but maybe God's waiting for us. And I kind of went, okay. <laughs> you know, and every season of life has its challenges. You know, we've been through probably most of them by now. <laughs> and, um, and I just realized that there's never like the perfect time to respond to God. It's now. And no matter what we face, the time to respond to the Spirit is now. And where the presence of the Spirit is, there is the power. And um, we are to desire the presence of the Spirit. We are to desire the presence of God because we will respond out of the presence of God. And it's an ongoing thing. Just on a little personal note, they were praying for Hart and myself at one point. <laughs> And um, so they were praying, and then they're going, Louise, I just feel like, no, I should I did back up. I was baptized when I was 13, and at that point in time, you know, the church that we were a part of, the pastor would always lay hands on every person that was baptized, and he would have a scripture for them. And the scriptures were very, I don't think we realized until we were older how significant they were. And the scripture that he gave me, was Joshua 1 9 have I not commanded you be strong and courageous do not be afraid do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go so they're praying for us and I'm thinking okay it's like you can kind of tell it's kind of winding down and then they say Louise you know there's three of them there is going I just feel like God just wants to say to you do not be afraid be courageous and they're you know praying all these things and I said how long do you think they're going to have to keep praying for me for that? Because I've had that numerous times over the years, you know. And um, it made me realize that we change our language as we get older. We're not fearful anymore. We just have concerns, you know. <laughs> and, um, you know, and things like that. But God just really pierced my heart. Like, Louise, let go of your fears. And we all have con concerns. But how much are they a fear that holds us back? And even though it's not... Um, an obvious fear that everybody knows, but we all have our concerns. And does that hold us back from God using us outside of that sphere of concern? And so that just really um, uh, spoke to me, and just the whole things of, like, do it scared, don't sit on the bench, Aslan is on the move. You know, the presence of God is the power for us to engage. And so I'm in. <laughs> don't know what it looked like, but I'm in. All right. I'm in too. Let's stand together. I had some personal things to share still too, but I'm going to leave those because I get to talk up here all the time, so you'll hear from me. Yeah, Valentine and I are leaving on Saturday. We're heading down to Arizona for five months, so we never, when we leave at that long a time, we never know if we're going to see you guys again. 
because God, Jesus could come back at any time. But I just wanted to share this little thing. I was worshiping the Lord this morning, and the Lord was showing me how good he is and how he dwells in the praises of his people. And we've touched on that a bit this morning. But back in the 70s, I was a fairly new Christian, and I was with another brother, and we were going out to remote areas like sawmills and that and ministering people's houses, the gospel, and teaching them and worshiping God and, and just doing what the, the Word of God says. And as most of you that know me, you know I am a word person. I love God's word. And I believe his word is, is uh, the, the, the ground that we stand on. It's our, it's our foundation. But they were ministering on God, how God dwells in the praises of his people. And I, I, was, I was really eating it up, man. And I was feeling great and powerful in the Lord. And I came back to Prince George, where I was living at the time. And I was driving down the, the highway and, uh, on the bypass. And it was pitch black, and it was just pouring rain, just raining cats and dogs. And all of a sudden, I pull up to the stop sign, and everything went dead in my van. <laughs> my lights went out totally, and I'm sitting there. And I thought, now what? You know. And the Holy Spirit says, well, aren't you, aren't you just talking about praising God? Are you going to sit there and, and, and worry, or are you going to get, praise him? So I said, okay, God, I sure don't feel like it right now in my spirit. But anyway, God, I'm just praising you for this situation. Hallelujah. And the next thing I knew, I saw these lights behind me pull up behind me, and I jumped out and ran back. And it, it was my best buddy's wife, uh, Pat, and she had, was driving a three-quarter ten Ford. And I was driving a big milk wagon converted to a motorhome. Eh? So I, I made sure that the bumpers lined up. She pushed me off the road and uh, left me there to give me a ride home. Next day I came back and there was one little wire had fallen off the distributor and that's all it was. And I, I'm sure an angel pulled that thing off just to <laughs> test me that night. So the Lord dwells in the praises of his people. Praise is comely. And when you praise God in your circumstances, no matter what they are, you know, the Lord will be there with you and he'll change it. He will change those circumstances. I guarantee it. And, it's, you know, we gather here on Sundays, and we, it's easy to praise God when you're amongst fellow worshipers and you sense his Holy Spirit, and that's wonderful. But wherever you are, brothers and sisters, whether you're alone or with you're somebody else, God is with you. You've got the Holy Spirit inside of you. And when you stand upon God's word and you worship him, wherever you are, he will change those situations. He will cause you to go through the waters, and they won't overflow you. He will cause you to go through the flame, and it will not kindle upon you. Because we are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Amen. All right. God bless you guys as you go. Okay. I'm going to, uh, what we're going to do, we're going to receive communion. And um, before we do that, though, I just want to encourage you, hear what God's saying to you. My, my hope is that for, for each of you today, in some way, there's this level of anticipation, there's this uh, came through various ones, this whole thing of it does require us to say, okay, God, I'm willing to take steps. I'm willing to take steps in faith. It's not just about me. It's about other people. It's about serving others. It's about having compassion for others. It's about caring for other people. And uh, I just really want to encourage you, uh, hear what he's saying and say yes today, say yes tomorrow, say yes throughout the day tomorrow. <laughs> And just, okay, God, I'm willing. What does this look like? Um, you know, I was feeling so strongly about this at the Chilliwack Vineyard. I went out during a session. I thought, okay, I bet you there's someone out in the back alley that I can speak to. I go out there. There's only one group of guys way up the street and one group way down the street. So I, okay, I'm, I'm going to go walk up there. Well, they're all drunk as can be. Walked right through the middle of them. They didn't even notice I was there. Um, so, okay, I guess this isn't the group. So I walked down the other group. By the time I got down there, they were all outside having a smoke break, I guess, from some kind of party. They'd all gone back in. I'm going, God, what's going on? Like everybody, you know, I'm willing to talk, you know. Um, <laughs> it didn't turn out to be something, but you know what? I believe God calls us to keep taking risks. And maybe that time was just about, are you willing to go do it? Okay, just testing. <laughs> So um, I just want to, we're just going to pray right now, and then I'm going to give you instructions on, on how to receive communion today. Um, just respond between you and God. Let's just be quiet for just a bit and just respond to what you heard today in some way. Just you say to God what's on your heart in light of today.
So, Lord, as each of us take that little part of a fish, thinking of the story that was shared, or the little part of a bun, and bring it to someone in hopes that you'll multiply it. Lord, I, I pray for all of us that we would take those steps of obedience, and then I pray that you also, according to your promise, would come and also empower us by your Spirit and multiply what's in our hands. And we pray that your kingdom would be advanced through us. I pray that we'd have the privilege this week, every one of us, as we take risks of just stepping out and serving a neighbor, loving a neighbor, loving a coworker, caring for somebody in the grocery store, I pray that each of us would have the privilege of serving people in some way, loving people in some way today or this week. And I pray that your kingdom would be advanced through us, Lord. And now, Lord, as we, as we want to, as we do every week, these weeks, Lord, we, we want to receive your body and your blood. We thank you, Lord, for the bread that, that is, is a symbol of you, Lord Jesus, allowing your body to be broken for us so that we could have life. Thank you so much. And thank you for the cup that's the, the symbol of the new covenant that was made by your blood, Lord Jesus, being poured out. Thank you that we don't just have 95% of our sin forgiven, but as we've placed our faith in you, 100% is forgiven. 100% of our sin is forgiven. We're clean before you. Thank you for the regular reminders of that. And I pray according to your word now that as we receive your body and your blood, I pray that there would just be a sense of participating in you. You said it's actually a participation in you. And so I pray the prayer that we talked about, I pray, come Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, as we receive the bread and the juice, come, Holy Spirit. Come, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So what I want to encourage you to do is similar to what we did once before. I want to encourage you to take someone else with you. If you're a couple, take another individual or another couple. Or if you're an individual, take one or two other people with you and, and go and get your bread and juice and just go off somewhere where two or three or four or five or six of you can be together. And one of you just take the bread and say, this is the body of Christ that was broken for us. And then all of you receive that together. And then one of you just take the cup and say, this is...